Hey everybody, Joy here. Would you like a tutorial today? It is Friday, May 19, 2023. And I've started doing this project and I know people are gonna ask me how I did it. Maybe over at the embroidery website, maybe on Facebook at Sewing Sisters, maybe on my sewing channel, which is called Joy Bernhardt on YouTube. <laughs> but someplace, somebody's gonna ask me how I did this. So my lightning fast mind, <laughs> I thought, instead of going backwards and redoing it, why don't I just show you right now while I'm doing it, okay? So here's the thing. Pardon the mess. Everything's a mess. I've been playing with papers and scissors like a little kid. <clears throat> so here's the thing. Judy Kessinger, she may call it Kessinger, I'm not sure which, <laughs> owns Fit Nice System. Her website is Fit nice system.com she is having a challenge she has written two big fat books and i guess i should show them to you hold on i'm always doing something in these books so i'm forever looking for them <laughs> this book is called design it yourself that was her first book this book was later it's called top it off in these two books are a whole bunch of different styles of how to use her one top pattern and her one pat pattern to make all different kinds of styles. So she's having a challenge right now called the ABC challenge. And the reason it's called ABC is because her tops all have names that start with a letter. She has these um, indexes with pictures that you can print from a website to help you go through the books and know what's in them without having to look through them and find them. So I'll just give you an instance. For the letter A, there's the Audrey top. For the letter B, there's the Bobby top. For the letter C, there's the Callie cardigan. For the letter D, there's the Derby Diva. Okay, and on and on and on it goes. Some things may have three or four styles with that particular letter. Some things may just have one or two. But today, I think we have four choices. We're up to the F. And I think we have four different choices. I have chosen the faced V. And it just turns out that the faced V is not in either one of her books. <laughs> well, how the heck are we supposed to do it? The faced V is not in either one of her books. And the reason for that is, for a while, she had this club. And if you joined her club, it was like $75 a year. I don't think she has it anymore. Every month, she would send you a new style, maybe two new styles. And so those styles, some of them ended up in her books, but not all of them ended up in her books. And the faced V is one of them that was one of those special monthly club styles, okay? <laughs> However... <laughs> If you want to make it, if you want to watch people make it, you can go to the Facebook group called Sewing Sisters. I don't, it's probably Fit Nice Sewing Sisters on Facebook and join it. And even if you never ever make a top, even if you never ever want to make a top, even if you don't know anybody who's made a top, <laughs> if you like to see things people make, you can go there and you can see all of the different ABC styles that people put there. All right, I'm going to make the faced V. Now, the faced V is no big deal for me. I've faced a million tops. I've, I sew all the time. Um, a lot of you are probably um, people who've watched me for a long, long time. I made this. You know, I make almost everything I wear. So, the deal is you have to use her pattern. She has one top pattern, and you use it to make every style practically in the world. So, what I did was I went and I pulled out my... Fit nice, it has to be fit nice, pattern for a top that's a knit with a set in sleeve. Okay? I made this and this and this and this and this and probably some more things that I forgot to tape on here. So you can tell I like to make her things. So I pulled out my pattern. I just used this to make my last. E, ABC challenge. My E was a jacket. And it had 
um, about three inches added on out here. So I just cut that off, okay? <laughs> so we're back to my original top. Now, just me, I don't think anybody else in the whole world, just me, <laughs> that uses Fit Nice, I put an FBA in it. So you can see here on this paper where I have done an FBA and there was a dart here. Then I closed the dart and I moved it down here into the bottom. It makes the bottom wider. My bottom needs a wider. It likes wider. <laughs> so this is my pattern. So the thing is, you're supposed to make an original pattern that you never ever cut up and you never use. You just trace it and you make other things from it. Well, I'm really, really bad. This and I also have a SureFit Designs. <laughs> and I am just terrible about using my original pattern and destroying it. But today, today, I decided that I want one solid top to play with. So what I did was, I got out my, now, Judy Kessinger sells this, I think. Some of the things she used to sell, she doesn't sell anymore, but I think she still sells this. I didn't get it from her. It's called Pattern Ease, and I bought it from Amazon a long time ago. And as far as I know, you can't get it from Amazon anymore, but it's called Pattern Ease. There are other things that you can buy to draw patterns with. I use Dr. Table Paper a lot. I use other variations. There's, um, oh, I can't think of the name of the one. It's kind of like, more like a material than like a paper. Um, I'll think of it eventually. Usually things that I can't think of come to me in the middle of the night. <laughs> so the best thing about this, if you can get it, the best thing about this is it's super wide. It's, this is half of it. It's got a fold. It's got a fold right here. So this is just half of the width. You can see how I lined up the top front top front, and I cut it out, okay? It's got a little bit of a v-neck already because I just happened to have it in there because I've chopped it up so many times. So you can see how I cut a new front, okay? So we don't have to mess that up anymore. I did not cut out a new back because the back is just fine the way it is. I'm not changing the back, okay? So I wanted to show you this. It's a wonderful product if you can find it. If not, use some other kind of product. If your pattern paper, and I'm sure um, Joanne sells some form of it, if your pattern paper isn't wide enough like this, cut two of them and tape them together. Or tape it together to start with and then cut it out. But, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, my friends. Here is my new top. It has in it the original V that's on that piece that I just showed you. I have already lowered the V to be a different V. Why? I'll show you. <laughs> I've taken a red pencil and I've drawn the one half inch seam allowance that is in this particular pattern. Fit Nice uses one half inch. So I drew that in up here at the shoulder and I drew it in under the arm because that's not going to be there anymore after I make the blouse. And here it is over here on this side. See, here it is on the other side. I decided to lower the V a little bit. Can you see that with the green? It's a green friction marker. If I hit that with an iron, it's going to disappear. If I hit this red pencil with the iron, it's not going to disappear. I don't want it to. But I may draw half a dozen different necklines on this before I'm satisfied. So I just want to show you how I temporarily drew a new one half inch seam allowance and a new v-neck because it's hard for you to see it clear over there on the table. I can make this face V right now just like that have it over with by tomorrow at noon because it's almost time for supper tonight. But I'm not going to because I want to do something. Judy made a face V herself and shows us a picture of it. She made it several different ways. One of the ways she made it had a whole bunch of embroidery on it. It had this um, scribble design. Um, there's a name for it uh, when you use it for quilting. But of course, I can't think of that right now either. But it's just where you do the, you know, the little loops and the curvy things. 
It has a name. I'll think of it tonight in the middle of the night. So I decided I don't want that. I want a pretty embroidery design because I have like 500,000 of them. So what I did was I went to an embroidery website. My favorite website is Embroidery Library. Its website is EMB Library. I'll put I'll put the Fit Nice link and the embroidery link down in the description box. And um, I found a design that might look good on a V-neck. I've done this before on a denim dress. I, I may show it to you someplace in this video. But for this, I haven't done this before. So I decided I wanted a design that can come here on the V and here on the V and they can kind of run into each other, okay? So I'll show you how I play with that and how I come up with it. Let me get the camera over here where you can see close up to what I'm doing, okay? These are wonderful. If you are a seamstress or you want to be a seamstress or you think you might want to sew something someday, get you some of these. They're in my Amazon store. If you buy them in my Amazon store, they won't cost you any more than if you don't. If you go and you buy them somewhere else, okay? It's just you can find them easier if you go to my Amazon store. This one is 3 8 inch wide. This one is 1 half inch wide. And this one is 1 half inch wide. They're absolutely fabulous for drawing necklines and armholes and curves. This right here, that right there is the curve that I've used. Half inch seam allowance and the curve for the new neckline. I drew it over here first. Then, when I did it, I looked at the numbers on this thing. And the number seven is right here on this red half inch seam line. And the number 14 is down here at the center front. So then I just flopped it over and I put the number seven up here and the number 14 down here. See, awesome. So I don't know if you would like to have some of those or not, but just in case you wanna know how I drew that curve, that is how I drew it. Those are called French curves or styling curves or styling rulers. Like I said, you can find them in my store. So I've got center front marked here. This is my new solid front. Instead of being two fronts cut on center front, or instead of being one paper that you put on a fold, this is a whole front. When I cut this out of fabric, I will fold this in half and line this up with center front of the fabric. But right now I'm playing with it. And this is the design. This is just the first design. I may use 20 of them. There's no telling. This is just the first design. So what I did was I downloaded it to my software, my embroidery software. Then I rotated it. I flipped it. So one goes one way and one goes the other way. Then I cut it out of paper so I could line it up on my neckline here and play with it. And I'm trying to figure out, do I like it coming together? See, so you, you have to draw your neckline. <laughs> because if I put this up here like this, this is going to get cut off and this is going to get cut off. You have to be sure you know where your finished neckline is going to be or your embroidery design is going to be all wrong. And we're going to put the embroidery design on first before we even cut the front out. We may cut the front out roughly. And I say roughly, I'll probably cut it outside the armhole, just cut it straight across the shoulder, maybe a little bit in here and over there, because when you embroider something, it shrinks the fabric underneath it. So you don't ever cut the front perfectly out of the fabric. You cut it perfectly out of the paper. You cut it too big out of the fabric. I hope that makes sense. So I will probably play with this for a couple days. There's, there's no telling. I played with the last one for a couple weeks before I finally did this. <laughs> so I just play. And I see, okay, say like, that's the edge of the neckline there, and that's the edge of the neckline there. So do I like that? Do I like that? That's what it would look like. This would run into that. That's what it would look like. Do I like that? Or would I prefer it like this? See? See how you can play? Do I want this to come to the center front and turn it? 
and have it you don't want it right at the edge of your neckline you know you got to have some some free at least a quarter inch three eighths inch I would tell you need at least three eighths inch inside that see do I like it like that that makes a nice curve but I would prefer this on a curved neckline like the one I have on that would look a lot better on a curved neckline I think so since we're going to do a faced V it has to be a V because that's what Judy Kessinger said it has to be <laughs> so we're what we're going to do is we're going to go get some more embroidery designs to play with and put on here so I just wanted you to know that's how I very very start out doing a project. I clean off one of my tables. I have two of them. The one behind me is completely covered with about three different projects. <laughs> but this is how I start. I've already made this top. I already know this top fits me perfect. Don't start doing embroidery on something if you're not sure it fits you. Good morning. This is the next morning. I just started to do this and forgot that I'm doing a tutorial. I came up with this idea after going till six o'clock last night with my designs. I had this design. I even had bumblebees. I even had flowers. I worked with it for hours and hours. I had this design. And the thing is, I could not get any of these purchased embroidery borders to fit my curve and you cannot digitize somebody else's design very easily i i could put like two of them together i could put one here and put one here and then i could bend them but they don't curve they just bend it just it didn't work i wasn't happy with it so while we were at that uh, little casino restaurant called Kitchen 70, it came up in my mind, why don't I draw my own design and make it fit the curve? I am a quilter and I know how to do long arm quilting designs, feathers and leaves and roses and birds and anything. I can do anything. If there's a picture of it somewhere that I can sort of copy and go by, hey, I can do it. So I came up with the idea to make my own design. Now I have Artista software. Artista design, that is my embroidery software, and I can make my own designs. I can digitize my own designs. In the new software, I've got version 8, and um, if you draw a design or if you take a picture of a design, you can put that picture in there and then the embroidery software is supposed to digitize it by itself. So that's my plan, Stan. Right now, that's my plan. So here's my blouse front, my actual pattern. I've decided I am going to make it three inches wide. So I'm going around, marking three inches away from what will be the finished neckline. So it will be three inches away from this. See, this is finished. Seam allowance is gone. It would be three inches like that. Then I'm going to mark a quarter inch away so I don't sew it all the way into the neckline. I hope that makes sense. It will when you see it, I'm sure. So I'm marking three, three, three. Now I only have to do half, half of it because I can duplicate it and I can flip it. And that way it will fit both sides of the shirt. So I'm so excited. I hope it works out and I don't end up in tears. <laughs> we shall see. So right there's the point. It has to be a V because this is the faced V top from Judy Kessinger's Fit Nice system. It's my F. Three inches, three inches, three inches. Then I will get my curve. I showed you my curves yesterday. And I will fit it into what I just drew. And it fits perfect. Alright, so it's going to be like that. And it's going to be like this. And then I'm going to go a quarter inch away from the neckline. Let's do it in red. Let's go, no, let's do it in blue so we can iron it off. 
If I decide I hate this and I want to start over with another plan, I'll do it with this, um, these friction markers. The part that I don't want to iron away, I do in the red colored pencil. But the part that I think, oh, if I don't like it, I'll iron it away and start over. And I've already done that. I do it in the friction markers because then I can just iron it and it's gone. All right, so there's my quarter inch away. We'll see how I'm excited if this turns out like yesterday and nothing works. Oh, that was a hassle. I could not get anything. And of course, you know, other people wouldn't care that, you know, it didn't fill in this area completely and it was a little bit wider here and shorter here. Most people wouldn't care. I don't know why I do, but I do. All right, let me get the camera and put it down here and show you what I just did. This area right here, I am going to draw my own design. My very own. Here you can see one I worked with for a long time yesterday. And it's pretty. It's one that I joined to and then I kind of turned it a little bit. And I may end up going back and doing that if what I'm figuring out right now doesn't work. Then we'll go back and use that. That's really pretty. Why don't I save myself like a whole lot of headaches and just use that? <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. I drew my V-shape three inches wide. I went over to my copier. I folded this in half so it could fit in the copier. And I made four copies of it. This is number one. This is my first attempt at drawing a design. My first. I like it quite a bit. I'm using a pencil and eraser so I can go around and around and fix my curves and fix my feathers and do that sort of thing. So this is my attempt number one. I kind of like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a blank piece of paper and I'm going to put it on top of it on my light box. And my light box just happens to be right here. Look at this. Ta-da! This was my Christmas present from my husband. The drawing I did. A blank piece of paper. I'm going to tape it down because it's not going to stay still. With removable tape. Then I'm going to put this piece of paper on top of it with more removable tape. Don't dare use the other kind of tape because you will not get it off. So I'm going to start here at the bottom. Now I'm tracing now. I'm tracing what I did before, and hopefully it will come out better. Ta-da! Now when you're drawing this to start with, you're just very flowing, and your curves are better. But I've also got four or five lines making my curves like I wanted them. Okay, so there's piece number one. So that's going to line up. It goes like this, and that's going to line up with the other half of the V, and it's going to make a heart. That's the idea. See? <laughs> so, I'm not going to keep the camera on while you watch me do this boring activity, but I just wanted you to see how I'm starting. Okay, here is my drawing from the light box, and look there. I decided that I would add some Swarovski crystals to my design. How about that? <laughs> we shall see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go put this in my computer. I'm going to scan it, put it in my computer, then bring it into my Bernina embroidery software, and then I'm going to try to digitize this myself because I don't think that the automatic digitizer can do it the way I want it done. And that way I can soften my curves and make all the lines right and hey, let's see how good I am because I haven't done this since I made the bird heart quilt many, many years ago. This is a couple hours later and this is what I have digitized so far. This is my very first run of what I have digitized. So I'm going to do a practice sew out. You always have to do a practice, a practice, a practice. This is all triple stitch, and um, it looks several different colors now, but it's going to be all one color when I stitch it out. And I'm going to stitch it out on just some uh, stabilizer, and we'll see what it looks like. Five hours later, <laughs> I have digitized 
this little feather heart thing that I made. It fits my v-neck perfect. So the next thing was I had to find a hoop big enough. Those of you who have embroidery machines, you have to have a gigantic hoop. My hoop is so huge that my hoop, you see here where it squared off my curves, it's because I had a serger sitting there and the hoop hit the serger. So always, 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 always do a sample. This is just paper. I'm just sewing through stabilizers right now. One cut away and one tear away. And you can see it is sewing out really, really nice. But I'm so glad that I messed up my sample here. And I won't mess up my top. <laughs> Y'all should see the floor in here. It's just paper everywhere. <laughs> While this is sewing out, I'll clean that up. So I found this really pretty turquoise knit. It's very, very stretchy. So I hope I can do this without messing it up. So I have it folded into the center. Here's the other side. Fold into the center. Okay? Here's my front. This is my front that has to be embroidered. And it has to be as big as the hoop has to be at least as big as the hoop and it is yay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the V on so I'm going to take a friction marker let's use a brown one let's get my curve and let's draw my neckline I'm not going to cut it now I'm just going to draw it <laughs> I'm just going to draw it Okay, so there's my V. Here's my shoulders. There's my shoulders. I drew my V, I drew my shoulders, and this is my armhole. This is the approximate armhole. Why aren't you cutting the real one? Because it's going to change. Alright, so that's the approximate. Now, we know we have a half inch and this is 3 8 We know we have a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to mark a half inch seam allowance here on my neck. Half inch seam allowance. Then I know I don't want my design to come past 3 8 inch. In other words, I want 3 8 inch plain than the design. Okay? 3 8 inch unsewn and then the design. So then I'm going to put that in here. And if this turns out, <laughs> it's going to be a major miracle. <laughs> so we've got 4 eighths and 3 eighths is a total of 7 eighths. I have marked off the V. So my design will be sewn right here. So I'm going to mark the center front. That's going to be the center front center front. Now I need to cut my big rectangle. My big rectangle. There we go. Now, my V top front is inside this big rectangle. This big rectangle is going to go inside this giant hoop. And I should have paid attention to which way up was. I think that was up. I think this was up when I cut that. That was up. And that was down. Okay. Alright, so it's going to sew on facing that way. So we're going to face this that way. Isn't this a gigantic hoop? <laughs> Do you put the backing in with this? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So that's the next thing I have to do is make sure I've got backing at least as big as this. And I'm not even sure I do. So let me play with that for a little while. Then I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks when it's hooped, okay? Shearest of cutaways when embroidering on light colored knits or stretch fabrics to prevent show through of the stabilizer. No show mesh is very soft. Yeah, so I'm going to use this for starters. I'm going to use another piece of stabilizer 
behind it. So I took this over to my sink and I put it on this big piece of cardboard and I sprayed it with KK2000. There is a wrinkle in the front. There are several wrinkles in the front. This is supposed to be an iron-on, but it doesn't iron-on. It doesn't stay. I don't know. If you've used it and it stays, well, hey, you must hold your mouth right or something because I don't. So I just, I glue everything on. Temporary glue. It's going to go away in time. All right, so there's my center front. And there's this side of my V. I guess I should put the other side of my V on there as well. Where are you? I guess I should. So let's try that. Line up center front. Line up your neck right there. Yeah, it'd be nice if I had two sides. So I'll mark this other side too, just roughly. So that's the other side. So I have got that glued on. I am going to hoop it with that. So let's get the hoop underneath here. Put the design. The design is actually, see here how you can screw up? I was going to put it way down there. The design goes all the way up to the shoulders. So I should have cut this even higher. But I think I can get it all in the hoop. It goes way up here. So it needs to be hooped way up here. See? See how you can screw up? You can screw up in so many ways. <laughs> right there, I'm going to keep all of that tail end on there. And this has to go under. It takes a lot of room to do this big hoop. Let's get this. And let's move that. And let's get that over there. Listen, if you don't have lots of time, don't do this. <laughs> I highly recommend you don't do it. Make the blouse without this embroidery on it. Or pick a design, any design, <laughs> that you think will fit. And then this will come up here. Alright, so you see, here's my stabilizer. I have a whole bunch there and hardly any on this side. And I'm going to reach it over there, and I'm going to put it into the bottom hoop. Aha! It went. Yay! It went. Then you got to make it stay. Make it stay real good. Did I just tighten it? I don't want it tight. I want it loose. When I was doing the practice, I just did it on the stabilizer. I did two stabilizers. One cutaway and one tearaway. Cheap stuff. Well, it's not cheap. I got it on Amazon, so I mean, it's not Floriani or anything. But. You don't want to stretch this too much. I have got it close to center. Close. I am going to tighten the hoop. Ah, I need my husband, but he doesn't have any strength because his arm, you know. Ah. You got to put your foot on the table ah. and wrestle it. I can hear y'all saying, do this, do that. <laughs> there went my slippers. What do you do? Well, I'm going to get a screwdriver. Hold on. I'm going to loosen it up. You have to have tools if you're going to make stuff. Ah. 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 Persistence. Persistence is the trick. See? See that? It's a heavy duty thing. But that ought to hold an elephant. There we go. You want it nice and nice and flat. This is a real simple 20 minute sew out. Because it's just a triple stitch. I'm going to use this color. I said, what if I run out? Well, I had two of these. This I got from Amazon. It is tearaway. How do I know it's tearaway? Because it tears. So, I'm going to put this. No, did I say cutaway? That is cutaway. So, since that one's cutaway, I'm going to do this tearaway on the back. And I'm not going to hoop it. 
I'm just going to put it, okay? So about, will this work? I don't know. I haven't done this kind of a project before with this stretching of a knit before, but this is how we learn. It did not help. These things are alive. All right. Whew. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it more the size of it. I'm going to cut a little bit more off. And then I'm going to go spray it with the glue and I'm going to glue it underneath. Oh, so nice and smooth and it looks so good. Oh, please, please work. Please work. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, here's my design. Here's my design. This is my Solaris. I have my shirt hooped. I put the snowman in the middle. Now, let me point out something. Even though the arrow is pointing up this way, up from the middle of the heart, my design is turned. My design is turned in the embroidery machine or it isn't going to fit this hoop. So you have to make up be up on the embroidery design so your snowman has to face up. He, he could face any which direction on here, but in this case, <laughs> for your design to fit, you're going to have to put your snowman like that. I love the snowman. My friend Philly has a slayer, says so she doesn't have a snowman. I cannot believe it. Then I always choose to sew the square around because I think it stabilizes it a little bit. So I have got cut away, stabilizer, hooped, behind, the knit fabric. I have tear away, cut and glued with temporary adhesive to the back. It is not hooped. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I know you're going to ask me and I know I'm going to forget, so I'm just telling you this is what we're going to start with. Now I'm not going to use isocord thread. I'm going to use the sulky and I'm going to stop what I'm doing and make sure that the bobbin thread matches my sulky thread before I go any further. Okay, I've got my sulky thread up there. I don't remember how you're supposed to put the sulky, if it's supposed to be sideways or straight up and down, but that seems to be working. It wouldn't pull a little good, and I just kept working until it would. And so I've got beige. I found a beige um, isocord to put in the bobbin. Now remember, in the Elysimo and the Solaris, you have to put one of these little lifter upper things. If you're using a pre-wound bobbin, you have to use this. But if you wound the bobbin yourself, the bobbin that goes with your machine, then you take this out of the bobbin case. So don't forget that. There's so many things to remember. But look here. Let's do close up. Isn't that a pretty color? I don't know if I told you, but I had to take my machine off the table. When you have a hoop this huge, it is going to hit anything behind it. And I know it's true because the first one I sewed out hit it two times. And instead of making a rounded feather, it made a square tipped feather. So, just a note, when you're using a giant hoop, Give yourself a giant space to use it. Well, it's time to wrap up this video. <laughs> it is so totally far from professional, and I hope you forgive me for that. But I knew there'd be a lot of questions asking me how I did this. So, to the best I was able to do it, um, with the electricity going out, and the generator that we paid a zillion dollars for not working and my computer crashing. Ah. <laughs> Please forgive. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that it's not better than it is. But I wanted to show you how it turned out and tell you a really good tip. This is a really good tip. And I wondered why Judy did her facing the way she did it. And I think I know now. 
She made the facing like a great big rectangle that folded down inside her shirt. And I thought, well, what'd she make it so big for? And you know how big I made mine. I just made mine two and a half inches, the usual size of a front neck facing and a back neck facing. So the top is not all made yet. It has no sleeves and the side seams are still open. This is the strangest fabric. I would say it's some kind of microfiber. It feels like one of those, um, well, I can't remember what you call the rags, but like you would dry your car with. Not like the uh, microfiber rags like you scrub everything with and like I call magic rags. It's soft and rubbery feeling. It's really strange. I don't know if it's real expensive or real cheap, but I'm not sure I'm crazy about this fabric. But this is how the embroidery turned out. Let me get up close so you can see. It's not real bright. Not being perfect, I, you know, I didn't want it to show up a lot. I just wanted it to show up gently. <laughs> and that way, some of the parts that I don't think are perfect, nobody else is going to care, you know, unless they, they come up to me and go, Oh, look at your design, lady! <laughs> that would be wrong. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to give you one last tip and I'm going to shut up and go away, I promise. Alright, so I was talking about Judy Kessinger and how she made this great big facing to fold to the inside. Brilliant. Let me show you why. And it's easy to do since I can just flip it. See? This facing doesn't cover up all of that stabilizer inside. And there's not only stabilizer, there's thread, there's knots, there's so many things. And so how wonderful would it have been to make the facing big enough to cover up all of that stitching. It would have been very, very easy. Draw it five inches. You know, draw it however far it needs to be. You don't want to go all the way over to the shoulder because I've got to put a sleeve in here. But I could have come over this far and down this far very easily. And on my next one, I definitely will. So, hang around. One of my videos in the near future, you'll get to see version number two of this. Okay? But that's how I did this embroidery with my own design, using my embroidery machine, and a few little tools. Bye for now.